In this episode, we are finally gonna fire up the 1UZ that is swapped in my 1989 Toyota pickup. Brought to you in part by Cranbrook Toyota. So just like before the rebuild, we are going with the Spitronics standalone ECU and wiring harness. Previously, I was using the version one of the Spitronics harness, but this time around, I got a whole new harness and ECU, which apparently has some upgrades. The first thing I can see is a completely different map sensor, but also I'm pretty sure that this harness uses the factory 1UZ idle air controller, which is good because with the old setup, I always had just some slight issues with idle, depending on whether it was hot or cold, and I would constantly need to adjust the throttle body to compensate for that. In fact, now that I'm looking at it a bit more, there is a whole idle control module with this harness as well. So let's throw it in and see how it works. So there we have the Spitronics harness installed. I need to figure out where I want to put the map sensor, maybe up there. Same with this idle controller, maybe there. Not sure yet. A couple of small issues. This temperature sensor that they gave me to replace the stock one, I broke it trying to install it. Luckily there is a part number on here, so I'm gonna head to the auto parts store and see if they got one I can replace that with. And the other issue is this last plug right here, which I think is also a temperature sensor, doesn't fit. The little uh, alignment dowel things on it are just in the completely wrong place. And I'm, I'm pretty sure this is where this one goes because this is the only plug in that region. I'll send Spidtronics a message and see what they say about that, but I might just have to shave down a couple of these fins and it'll fit. So it turns out I was wrong about that sensor. Last night when I was done working on the thing, I sent an email off to Spidtronics telling them that I broke it. It turns out that's not actually a coolant temperature sensor. It is I think it was originally, but now it's modified to be an ambient air temperature sensor that I'm supposed to run into the intake. Anyways, I do have a new sensor ordered for that, but let me show you what I love about Spitronics. You guys saw me install the harness on the time lapse there, and to get it running, once you have everything attached to the motor, they give you this guy, which used to be a solid red wire. In most cases, you probably want to run this straight to the battery. In fact, they give you enough wire to do it. But in my case, I have this breaker switch installed that does go straight to the battery that then feeds the fuse box. So instead of running it all the way around, it made most sense to run it, boom, straight there into the breaker. And then coming into the cab, this here is the rest of the Spitronics harness. It gives you these two red wires which say to put to a switch source. So I just found this switch wire here off of the factory body harness, tied it into there, and then the last thing is this ground here that comes right off of the Spitronics ECU that I grounded here. So that means all that I have touched is three wires. That's it. Everything else was entirely plug and play. So now, if I go into the cab and turn the key, <laughs> It runs! So now that the motor is in and running, it's time to figure out how to make it move. As I said in the last video, I don't think that my bell housing that goes from the R150 transmission to the 1UZ is gonna clear the tranny tunnel. And that's gonna be an issue if I wanna fit the transmission. So to avoid trying to struggle to put a transmission up into place that is probably not gonna fit, I'm just gonna take the bell housing off and see if we can swing it in there. <laughs> nope, that is some <laughs> major interference issues. Now, before I commit to this cutting the four out, I'm going to try to massage it a bit with uh, with a hammer. I just need to push in up here 
and up here. Worth trying first anyways. Oh, if we put this guy up here. Still doesn't clear, but a bulk of my problems is this little fin here and this little fin here. So if I take my grinder and modify this bell housing and cut these down, that'll gain us like almost half inch of clearance on either side. Well, after a little bit of thinking, I've decided that there's no real way around it. We got to grab the grinder and cut up the transmission tunnel and make room for the engine. I've seen your comments in the last video saying, well, why don't you just lower the engine and solve all your problems? And the reason I don't want to lower this engine is because of up travel. I want the axle to be able to travel as far up as possible in the engine bay. And if I lower it back down, I'm going to have some interference issues. Before, this truck had a two inch body lift and I had the engine mounts sitting down about an inch. So all together, this motor is moved about three inches in relation to the cab. So that's why there's issues. But before I do that, I wanna show you guys something. You might notice all of the wood and construction materials behind me. Let's check out the shop. Over the past week, I have put a ton of work in here. Before, the ceiling was not closed in. It was just open rafters. And <laughs> the reason why the plywood is on top of the rafters here is because when I'm pulling motors, the engine hoist actually has to go in between those <laughs> to get enough height. So that's why there's a little section where it's above and the rest are below. But not only that, there is now nice plywood on the walls. It's painted. And white might not be the most ideal color for a shop. Obviously, it's going to get dirty really easily. But for filming in a shop, the white reflects the light really nicely on to not only me, but the cars or vehicles that are inside the shop. And the toolbox has been moved from the center of the shop, taking up a bunch of room, to the back of the shop. It wasn't there before because I had these shelves along the back wall, but they've been cut down and moved to fit the toolbox over here, which will ultimately restrict like the length of the vehicle that I put in here. But in general, for the amount of room I get in this direction, definitely makes up for it. Only thing I need to work around is that post. Anyways, I think that's enough of the shop updates. Let's go head out to the pickup, take apart the interior and well, figure out how we're gonna cut apart that uh, tranny tunnel. Now that the dashboard is out and the heater core box is now removed, we can kind of get an idea of where we want to cut in the vicinity here. So I took some rough measurements and I figured there's about an uh, inch and a half, maybe two inches of room between the floor pan and the heater core. So there is some room in here to cut open this area and kind of rebuild the tunnel around where the bell housing needs to lie. So next, Let's do that.
We've got this big old hole in the floor and I think I might need to cut out a little bit more. So before I did that, I threw the heater core box back in its home here just to double check. And like we're close, but I can cut, I don't know, half inch, three quarter inch out of this right here in the middle. And I think that's all we need to get the bell housing in here. I don't want to sacrifice my heat, obviously. This guy used to be on the bottom of it, sending air this way. And I could definitely modify this guy, so I'm not worried about that. But there's stuff like this uh, flap controller here that I can't really cut out and move and like JB weld back together. So I wanna keep this part structural, so I'm gonna cut as absolutely high as I can and uh, hopefully we can get this bell housing in here. Also, it is freaking hot today. <laughs> Holy. Now that the bell housing is in here and we know everything's gonna clear, I'm looking at the top bolts here and thinking, huh, the transmission might run into this. Unless for some reason the transmission goes up and into there. Let's go, let's go take a look at the tranny, which is over here. And oh, it actually does slope up and in. This might just clear, but to know that, I gotta try to install the thing, but first, it is filthy. So, let's clean this guy up. So this is just a bucket of hot, soapy water. Just dish soap. Dish soap works great as a degreaser. So, I'm just gonna scrub that down with the sponge and the hose and there it goes. I might be a little bit of an idiot. After doing all that work, cutting the floor, trying to fit up the bell housing, after I went to try to install the transmission, I realized that crap, I need to put the clutch and pressure plate on the uh, flywheel still. And that is absolutely not fitting <laughs> with these guys in place. It barely fit as is. Instead of cutting even more out of it, I'm just kind of changing my game plan here. Remember how I said I don't want to move the engine mounts? Well, that's exactly what I'm gonna do. So I put the radiator in just to see how much room I've got to come forward with the motor. As is with my current engine mount configuration, the engine is actually set back a little bit more than I had before. Because before, I couldn't put fans on the inside of the radiator sandwiched between the engine here. They were actually mounted out here. I was attempting to avoid that by moving the engine back just that little bit, but that is also forcing my engine to literally be resting on the firewall. So I think if I move the engine forward even just one inch in there, I can at least like rock the engine backwards that would allow me to bolt up the transmission and then jack it back up straight. And you know what? I always kind of figured this was gonna happen. If you guys have seen the footage, my engine mounts are just a plate coming straight off the top of the frame and then to the engine mounts. There's no bracing or anything like that because I always assumed that I was gonna have to fix it. And in an earlier video, I actually talked about these bushings I picked up to make completely new engine mounts. So yeah, I am gonna move the motor I'm not dropping it down, but I am pushing it forward just a little bit. Plus, I need to finish up my shop so I can push the truck back into it to work on it because I can't do any welding or grinding out here with my lawn currently in the state of fire starter. To be safe, all the work's gotta be done in there. And with that said, this is about all the time I got to work on it this week. Hope you guys enjoyed it. I am absolutely stoked that the One UZ is running and fired up first time with the Spitronics harness. If you guys are interested in picking up one of those, I'll have a link for it in the description down below. And of course, if you guys do me a huge favor, hit that thumbs up button and hey, consider subscribing. We upload weekly Toyota building, wheeling, and off-roading content. Anyways, we'll catch you next week. Peace.